Hello and welcome back to The Artful Chef. Today, we are going to be combining my Art 1, Art 2, and Art 3 student lessons together. We are going to do an extension of what we learned before our Thanksgiving break, and we talked about making 3D shapes. So now that you are all familiar with how to correctly draw a cylinder, we're going to take that cylinder shape and we're going to recreate a soda can. So for this lesson, you will need any kind of a soda can. Um, my Art 1 students, you will draw this can exactly as it is. My Art 2 students, you're going to have to take it a step further. So if you're my Art 2 or Art 3 class, I want you to take your can and I want you to crumple it and put some wrinkles in it because I don't want you to just see the basic can. I want you to start thinking outside the box and showing me those different um, lines and shadows and shapes that you get when you are trying to draw a crumpled can versus a straight can. So you will need colored pencils for this. We are going to be practicing those colored pencil skills that we learned a while back. Um, I do want you to make sure that you're using those skills because that's how you're going to get that shiny appearance on your can to make it look realistic. You will need to think about your background and I want you to be creative. Uh, I don't want to see any plain backgrounds. So if your can is sitting on a beach under an umbrella or if your can is out on the edge of the Grand Canyon or surfing a wave, I want you to think of it like that. So you're going to start out with your basic can and we're going to get to that in just a second. And then you're going to give your can a scene. So you're going to actually create an art piece based around your soda can. So let's get started. What I want you to do when you are drawing your cylinder for your can, I want you to start by measuring the height of the can. So we're going to try this to make this look as realistic as possible. So on my can here, this can is approximately five inches tall. It's about four and three quarters. And it is approximately two and a half. It's a little more than two and a half, but we're gonna go with two and a half for simplicity. So you're going to make your lines and I'm gonna start mine up a little higher here. And I'm only doing mine on half the page because I'm going to show the plain can on one side and the crumpled can on the other side. But when you do yours, I want you to turn your paper portrait. Remember, portrait is when you have your, your paper up and down like this. So this is portrait. This is landscape. I want you to draw yours in portrait. But for this example, I'm going to draw it in landscape. So I'm going to do five inches. I'm going to come over two and a half. Okay. Alright, so I have my basic rectangle. That's how you're going to start it out. And I'm going to draw these lines a little darker so you can see them better in the camera. Um, of course, when you're drawing things for your own purposes, it is a lot easier to erase later if you draw lighter to begin with. And I know I tell you guys that all the time. Try to be light-handed with your, your pencil, especially on these top lines because you are going to have to erase some of that and you don't want it to be so heavy that you can't erase it. So what I want you to look at, have the basic shape. So when you are looking at the soda can, if you notice, it kind of tapers in at the top. So you have your rounded part. So you want to make sure you create that taper on your can. So if you measure from where it begins to taper, turn my ruler around, from the top to that taper is about three quarters of an inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my ruler here and I'm going to come over to three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. 
actually I've got to get this distance correct here. So I've got it coming in a quarter of an inch here. So a quarter of an inch needs to start here. And then three quarters of an inch. All right, so this part right here is going to be this band, this area, this part where it curves in like this. So you want to make sure that you get that. So what you would do is you would go in and you would erase this top part because you don't need that anymore. So that's how you would begin with the top. Now if you notice, it is a gradual slump back up to the rim. So we're gonna kind of curve that a little bit. And I'm gonna erase that unnecessary lines there. So this would be the beginning of the top of your soda can. And then what I want you to notice is the bottom and how the bottom tapers in a little bit so it is smaller at the bottom just like at the top so it tapers in but it's a lot less it's not going to be three quarters of an inch it's going to be more like let's see about a half an inch a little less than half an inch so that's going to be past the bottom so we're going to come out this way and just taper it in like this Now, it is uh, a two-step, so it's gonna curve in and then come back out again. So I'm gonna come down about a quarter of an inch, and then I'm gonna curve back out to make the rest of that. And then I'm gonna draw my line across the bottom there. So I have my base that tapers out, my top that tapers out. That would be the basics for how to get started on this. You do need to remember your rim up here. And depending on the angle that you are viewing your can from, you might see part of this and you might not. After you've drawn your basic shape, you can go in and you can do the details that are on this picture. Next, I want to show you how you would do this if you were in my Art 2 or Art 3 class and you were drawing a wrinkled can. For my next can, what I have done is I have taken this Pepsi can and I have just bent it and crinkled it and made some interesting different little folds in it. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how you would measure this differently. So when you are measuring this one, it is not going to be the same height on one side as it is on the other, depending on how you have wrinkled your can. So this one, for example, this one is around four, just a hair over four and a half inches on one side. But then when I turn it to the tall side, it's almost five inches. And you want to make sure that you make note of that when you're drawing it over here because you are also going to go in and you're going to put all these different wrinkles that are in here. So we're gonna go ahead and draw that. Now it is the same size across as the other can. So it's gonna be two and a half inches wide. And it is going to be five inches on one side. Sorry, I'm trying to get this lined up here. But it is going to be four, we're gonna go a little over four and a half here. didn't hold my ruler and it moved on me. That happens. So I'm 
gonna draw those a little darker for you to see. I'm so used to drawing lightly that I forget to draw heavy when I need to. So you notice that one side is noticeably shorter than the other. I'm gonna connect that across to do the base. Now on this one, we're gonna look at it a little bit differently. So we're not gonna come straight across or even straight at a diagonal because if you were looking at this can sitting up, you're going to see part of the top of it. So it's actually going to, this one kind of curves a little bit as I'm looking at it because of the wrinkle in it. So this is what my rim would look like from this view. And then I'm going to see some of this cylinder shape showing on top. You also might see some of the, the mouth of the can and even the pull tab. On the bottom, because I have not wrinkled the bottom of the can, the bottom is going to be very similar to the base of this can. So we can go ahead and do that. The one thing that I want to note that is going to be different is when you get ready to draw whatever is on the can. You're gonna have to show where these wrinkles are coming out. So if I'm gonna draw it from this view, this wrinkle kind of sticks out. So you actually would need to draw this line that comes in and then out past the can like this. It folds back in and it crinkles down this way. So this part of the can actually would need to be erased because the can folds in on the edge. So we're going to work our way through all of these different folds and wrinkles that are on here. I'm going to draw them all out and then I'm going to talk to you about how you color them so that you create all these different shadows and you give it this look of a wrinkled can but done in colored pencil. I have finished an example of my expectations for you for this project. So this is be for my Art One students. If you notice, this is the original can, the recreated can. They are the same size. And I have copied the design that's on here. I want you to think about your burnishing skills with colored pencil when you are working with this. Remember burnishing is when you layer over and over and over again until the paper gets smooth and you take away all that, that tooth, that grit that you feel in a paper. So when you layer and layer and layer, it gets to the point where your colored pencil becomes shiny. That's what we're looking for when you're trying to burnish. So you definitely want to do that on the can because cans are shiny and you want it to have that shiny appearance like the can does. Now it is not as necessary on the background depending on what your background is. So on this example, I made my can sitting on a picnic table looking fabric and then I have the mountains and the sun setting in the background. One thing that I would like to point out is if you want to create something like this where it looks like there's a highlight or like there's a lighter area, you have to lay down your lighter colors first. So what I did was I colored a solid area of white colored pencil here where I wanted to, it to look like it was lighter and brighter in that area. And then I just colored right on top of it with my other colored pencils. So again, layer your lighter colors first because it's always easier to go back and, and change what you want around it if your lighter color is down there first. But that lighter color is not gonna show up if you put your heavy dark color down before that. So that is how you create that look. Now let's talk about the wrinkled can for my Art 2 and 3 students. So in this example, here's my wrinkled can and my point of view that I'm looking at. So again, you notice that the can's the same size. The way that I created these shadows and these markings so that you can see the folds and see the wrinkles in the can is I went in first with a darker color. 
I layered on top of it with a lighter color and I came back in and I layered with the darker color and I kept alternating my layering until I got it to the point where it looked like shadows and folds on my can. So this would be where the wrinkles are. I gave it a setting, of course. I said I wanted a setting for my pictures, all pictures. So this one is in the desert, surrounded by cactus, because that's, you know, where I love to be is the desert. If you want clouds, remember you have to color in those lighter areas first. So anything that you want to have a shine or a highlight of a lighter color, you have to do that lighter color to begin with. And then you can go on top of it with your actual colors after you have laid down that layer of your lighter color first. If you do it in reverse, it will not work out as well for you. So these are my two examples. Remember if you are in art one, you're going to be drawing your can straight and simple. You do have to give a background no matter which class you are in. But in art two and three, I do have the expectation that you are going to show some type of wrinkle or fold or something different about your can. And if you want to wrinkle it even more so than this, you can do that. You just need to make sure that you are showing all those wrinkles and folds. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this assignment. I look forward to seeing the creative settings that you have for your different artwork. Remember to take a picture of your project and upload it to the assignment section in Canvas. You do have two assignments in there this week, so check out the other one. And I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with. If you are not one of my students, but you love watching our cooking videos or our art videos, please make sure you like and subscribe so you can get those notifications when we have new things that come out. And I will see you guys again next week.